Next up is Psalm 45, and with the word of wisdom from our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 1, my heart is indicting a good matter, which means bubbling up and overflowing with joy, in this case in looking forward to the return of the true husband at the seventh trumpet, who is both King of kings and Lord of lords. I speak of the things which I have made touching thee, King. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer with an anxiousness to share the good news, which is what gospel means, thou, meaning Christ. Christ Jesus art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever, Christ being God the Son, the only begotten of God the Father. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty, and in thy majesty ride prosperously. Upon his return at the seventh trumpet, upon a white horse, as you can see in Revelation 19, where he's called faithful and true because he's the true Christ, who doesn't return at all until immediately after the fire month long hour of temptation and woe unto those that aren't virgins spiritually at that time as Christ says in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 deceived by the rider of the white horse in the first seal which is Satan in his role of Antichrist that word bow is toxon in the Greek meaning as the simplest fabric a cheap fabric imitation that is to say Satan in his role of Antichrist when he appears in Jerusalem at 666 which is when the seals go into their ultimate spiritual meaning with the true Christ not returning until immediately immediately after the half hour written of in the seventh seal at the seventh trumpet in the seventh vial, in other words, 777, which is after 666, and in majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness, and thy right hand shall teach terrible things. Even the book sealed with seven seals you can read of in Revelation chapter 5, in the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, that only the lamb slain can open our understanding to, whereby we're not deceived. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies whereby the people fall under thee all flesh being destroyed at the seventh trumpet when every knee shall bow to the true Christ that's also when Satan's fallen angel locust army and his role of antichrist are destroyed also as you can see in Revelation chapter 19 verse 20 Daniel's fourth beast in other words leaving only those who are still part of the lion bear and leopard of Daniel chapter 7 to either learn the discipline Christ will teach through the millennial priesthood whereby they can stand against Satan after the thousand years are finished or they can follow Satan again at that time and get blotted out of existence in the lake of fire. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, Christ being the Ancient of Days of Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 and 10, as well as the one that sat on the throne of Revelation chapter 4, with Revelation chapter 5 looking back to when Christ descended to God the Father, who is the Ancient of Days in Daniel chapter 7 verses 13 and 14, which is again looking back to when God the Son ascended to God the Father ten days before the first Pentecost after his death, burial, and resurrection, which you can read of in the book of Acts. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter, the scepter of Judah, Christ being the lion of the tribe of Judah and the root of David, as it's written in Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. The lamb slain who returns at the seventh trumpet is king of kings and lord of lords, the only one who can open our understanding to the seven seals whereby we're not deceived. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war, as it's also written in Revelation 19. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee, Messiah meaning the anointed one, with the oil of gladness above thy fellows, God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold and Ophir, the lamb's wife you can read of in Revelation chapter 21, Christ ultimately being Israel as we know from from Isaiah chapter 49, so if you're in Christ, you're Israel also, as all were in the first world age. Abraham's seed and an heir according to the promise, the promised land being ultimately symbolic of the third world age, all who are in Christ Jesus will go into after the thousand years are finished. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear, forget also thine own people and thy father's house. Just as the truth causes many families to become at odds with one another because most are blinded at this time. So so shall thee, king, desire thy beauty, for he is thy lord, and worship thou him. And the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. Those who were Kenites, the sons of Cain, who are the stones worn smooth that come from the false rock, which is what Tyrus means. Satan being the king of Tyrus, as we know from Ezekiel 28, and the natural branches of his family tree, as well as those still grafted in when the seventh angel sounds, will have the opportunity to absorb Christ's 
teachings of discipline through the millennial priesthood whereby they can obtain the wherewithal to stand against Satan after the thousand years are finished and become Israel also, that is to say, grafted into God's family tree and able to go into the eternity, which is the third world age. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of wrought gold, just as the holy Jerusalem is pure gold, as you can see in Revelation chapter 21, verse 18. The lamb's wife, meaning all who are saved, as opposed to those who will be cast into the lake of fire at the great white throne judgment after the thousand years are finished. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework, the fine linen made up of our righteous acts as Christians even, as you can see in Revelation chapter 19, which is why Christ says in Revelation chapter 16 in the 15th verse, Behold, I come as a thief. That's unexpectedly to most people because they'll think he's already here. They'll think Satan is Jesus when he appears at the sixth trumpet, and when the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet, most people will be completely caught off guard. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. They'll not only lose their virginity, spiritually speaking, and become the whore of Babylon in the apostasia, they'll also lose credit for all their righteous acts as Christians, making them naked, because they're no longer Christians once they begin to worship the devil. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. Those of the seven thousands of Doc gathered to Jerusalem to live and reign with Christ for a thousand years, as you can see in Revelation chapter 20. The only ones allowed to approach Christ until the thousand years are finished, as we know from Ezekiel 44, the 144,000 being virgins also, as well as whosoever will repent and come out of the confusion before the seventh trumpet sounds. With gladness and rejoicing, singing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb, shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. And again, only the 7,000 Zadok can approach the king until after the great white throne judgment, after the thousand years are finished. Then shall we, meaning the entire many-membered body, ever be with the Lord. Instead of thy fathers shall be thy children, whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth, inheriting all things as it's written in Revelation chapter 21. But also, as you can see in 1 Kings 2015, the 232 are called there the princes of the provinces, possibly only 232 of the 7,000 Zadok being those who are on earth during the hour of temptation, those who remain virgins, spiritually speaking, all throughout that five-month period, as opposed to the 144,000 and those who of their own free will repent, who will then have their virginity restored, so to speak, that is to say, being restored to the many-membered body of Christ, which is the virgin bride, being then able to take part in the first resurrection at the seventh trumpet, when the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet with the armies which were in heaven, which are the rest of the 7,000 Zadok who had lived and died throughout the centuries. I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations, therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. Christ Jesus, the Lamb slain in the Ancient of Days of Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 and 10, when the sheep are separated from the goats, as it's written in Matthew chapter 25. And after the thousand years are finished, the third world age begins, which is when the holy city, the new Jerusalem, comes down from God out of heaven. And remember, this is after all are gathered together for the great white throne judgment, after the thousand years are finished, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The woman of Revelation chapter 12 verse 1, minus those who choose to follow Satan again after the thousand years are finished, as well as Satan himself and his fallen angel locust army who are blotted out before the thousand years begin. All who offend being blotted out of existence, after which all who believe upon the only begotten Son of God go into the promised land, which is symbolic ultimately of the eternity, which is the third earth and heaven age.